policy must move us in a different direction. Now, I know that you've spent a lot of time working on these issues, and let me just put up another one. As, as horrible as this spill is, we need to understand what the oil industry is all about. The oil industry has been operating in America for about 140 years, maybe 100 since the turn of the last century, 1900, it really got underway. And for a century now, the oil industry, well, let me just ask a question, because this is what this asks. Which of these industries receives the most federal subsidies? Read tax dollars. Subsidies are tax dollars. You want to talk about taxes, my Republican friends? Where do your tax dollars go? Well, let's find out. Um, it looks like solar panels, right? Okay. Do they get more? They get the most subsidies. Uh, how about windmills? Well, let's call them wind turbines. The modern word for them, wind turbines. Um, this is a, a, an interesting one. It's been around for years, uh, and this is using uh, the the ocean, the waves and the, and the ocean or the current in the ocean or even in the rivers. Um, and this is an interesting one. This is really a brand new one. And these are uh, algae, uh, algae uh, producing uh, biodiesels or the oil industry. Now, my question to you, Mr. Ellison, is which of these receives the greatest subsidy, read tax dollars from the public? Do we need a drum roll first, uh, Congressman Grimanian? Uh, I think we know. I think come we on, know. take a guess. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to take a wild guess. The oil industry. The well, oil you are a brilliant legislator and a fine, uh, a, a, a fine arbiter of the question. It turns out you're right. It is the oil industry. Um, let's take a look at this. Our tax dollars. Where do they go? Well, let's see here. This side is the oil industry, and this is from 2002 to 2008. So uh, we've got some numbers up here uh, for fossil fuels between 2002 and 2008. This is um, the oil and, the, uh, and a little bit of the coal. $72.5 billion of direct subsidies, our tax money, being taken out of our pocket and given to the oil industry, $72.5 billion in just six years. So where does it go? Let's see here. Uh, traditional fossil fuels, oil and, and uh, coal. There you have it. Now on the other side, renewable energy. Well, we have the corn ethanol industry, and they've received about $16.8 billion. And then the traditional renewables, these would be solar and wind and, and the like, about $12.2 billion. So taken together, $29 billion for renewables in the same six-year period that the oil industry received $72.5 billion. Now, the question of public policy is this. What if we flip this over? What if we flip this around and we took the $72.5 billion and spent it on renewables and we can continue a little bit of the subsidy if they really need it, which they really don't. Not if you have $58 billion of profits. Don't seem to me they need much help. But, okay, we just flip it over. They'll take 29 and we give the renewable industry the 72. What would happen? Well, you know, they, well, you know, they, we'd be a lot healthier. We would uh, have... Uh, we wouldn't be burning hydrocarbons and spewing them into the air. Our planet would be healthier. We would see ourselves, uh, we, our technology and our, uh, our, our creativity would blossom as we subsidize these renewable sources of energy. Uh, it would be a, a good thing. It would be a very, very good thing. And most economists who look at the international markets and the next great industries, don't look to the 19th century energy industry, coal and oil, as being the growth industries and where the jobs will be created. Those economists and futurists who look at these things tell us that the great energy industries of the future are the energy industries of this century, the renewables of all kinds, 
all that we had up here and even more than I had on that little chart, that the jobs will come there. And our policy ought to be to encourage those industries and those things, the wind turbines, the solar, uh, even the nuclear systems and the rest, that they be built in America. And let's not forget about the efficiency.